A very good afternoon. Thank you so much for staying with Look Up TV. It is the 19th day of May 2020 and we are coming to you live from our Look Up TV offices right here, Kenya's capital, Nairobi. This is Trending News. I am Nancy Nalima. Welcome to the broadcast. But first, let's take a look at the highlights. Parliament approves Martha Kome for swearing in to succeed David Maraga. Kenya is set to receive 44 billion shillings, being the second payment of the overall $2.3 billion. In international news, cyclone hits India, hampering the vaccination process throughout the country. Thank you for staying with Look Up TV and the broadcast begins now. Pavel Emeke wins Bonchari constituency elections as Francis Mariah wins Ruri Ward by elections. Vote counting resumes in Juja at the Mangu Taling Center. More details on this story as we briefly look at former Prime Minister Ralo Dinga's remarks following the chaos in Juja Taling Center and Bonchari constituencies. Pavel Oimeke has been declared winner of the Bochari constituency by election, gaining voter support over the 12 candidates, including United Democratic Alliance and Jubilee. Zebedo Opore of Jubilee Party came in second, with 7,279 votes, while Teresa Bitutu, wife of former member of parliament of UDA, came in third with 6,964 votes. In Ruri Word, Francis Moriah won while Peter Dinji of Jubilee Party garnered 3,059 votes. Could this be a demonstration of the UDA influence in Mount Kenya region? Later, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga posted his views on Twitter about the chaos amid claims of intimidation and bribery. He called out police who were abusing their power, stating that it was an arrogant display of impunity by a few overzealous government functionaries. Voting at Mangu High School was resumed after IEBC Chairman Wafula Chebukati made a visit to the polling station early today. However, Jubilee candidate Susan Jerry stormed out of the tallying center, terming the vote counting exercise as unfair and claimed that there were cases of rigging during the voting. Till now, the counting exercise is going on, and any time from now, the IEBC will announce the winner of the hotly contested seat. Joy Mochache for Look Up TV, Nairobi. Thank you, Joy Mochache, for that story. And now moving on, the Independent and Electoral Boundaries Commission has received a maximum total of 700 applicants for the full vacant commissioner positions. Speaking in a press address, the chairperson of the selection panel, Dr. Elizabeth Mully, said that the deadline for sending application was on Monday, and now they will collect them and publish the names of the applicants. Dorothy Odondi with more details. In a Gazette notice dated 14th April this year, the president declared the vacant positions. This after the resignation of Vice Chairperson Conin Katha, Paul Kurgat, Margaret Mochanya, and Rosalina Kombe, who was the first commissioner to exit in 2017. The IEBC Act establishes an electoral commission comprising seven commissioners, including the chairperson. Earlier on, a five bench judge, while declaring the Building Bridges Initiative null and void, also restrained IEBC from undertaking any processes in respect to the amendments. The judges claimed that IEBC lacked quorum of carrying out its mandate, including verification of BBI signatures. Now the IEBC is in the process of lodging an appeal in regard to the Thursday High Court ruling on its legality and constitutionality in relation to quorum. The IEBC Commission Chair of Ulache Bukati said that they will last with their lawyers to discuss the matter before they move to appeal the judgment. Dr. Muli marked that due to the huge number of applicants, it will take a while to sort those who applied manually 
end electronically and they would publish the list by Monday next week. For Look Up TV, Ruth Yodondi. Thank you, Dorothy. And now to the Kenya Airways. Parliament Committee on Delegated Legislation is seeking to exempt the national carrier Kenya Airways from paying minimum tax once it comes into effect. In its plea to the committee, KQ stated that the introduction of another tax will burden the airline's obligation further. Especially amid the pandemic, the exemption, if approved, will apply to the Kenya Airways and all its five subsidiaries. Brenda Mashumbe has more on the story. Cash-trapped Kenya Airways is pleading with the National Assembly through the Committee on Delegated Legislation to exempt it and its subsidiaries from paying minimum income tax once it's implemented. KQ requested to be exempt from paying the minimum tax, citing the COVID-19 pandemic had affected the airline operations, worsening its financial position. Further, they said that under the current situation, the minimum tax will render the company unstable given that the airline continued paying expenses even during suspension of all flights occasioned by COVID-19 pandemic. KQ is seeking exemption from the minimum tax for five of its subsidiaries, including low-cost carrier Jumbo Jet, Kenya Air Freight Handling, Africa Cargo Handling Limited, Ken Cargo Airlines International Limited, and Fahari Aviation. In its last financial statement, the national carrier reported a 36.57 billion shilling pre-tax loss, in which it was to pay 10.05 billion shillings. The airline will be forced to pay an extra 365 million shillings with the introduction of the minimum tax. The law which came to effect last year has been challenged in court, with the High Court stopping its implementation. The law, however, does not exempt under Section 12D of the Income Tax Act from paying minimum tax whether the entity is in a profit-making position or not. The Finance Act 2020 that amended the Income Tax Act introduced minimum tax to be charged on all business enterprises whether they are profit-making or not. This was meant to discourage tax planning. Brenda Mwashumbe, Look Up TV, Nairobi. Thank you, Moshumbe, for that story. And we want to know where are you watching us from? Do speak to us. The SMS number is 20374. Follow, share and subscribe to us, uh, Look Up TV or on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube as well at Look Up TV. We are taking a short break. Don't go too far.